did the work. Telling Joseph about God. He said, you must not depart from this God. This is where I'm coming from. <laughs> it's the God of my father, Abraham. The God of my father, Isaac. In fact, in one place, he called them the God of Abraham, the fear of Isaac. Never date anyone that does not fear God. He will kick you out at any time. She will show you pepe. If you're a guy. The God which fed me all my life long unto this day. That is the God of my life's journey. Joseph, I'm telling you now. The God who fed me. Go to the next verse. Verse 16. The angel which redeemed me from all evil. This life is full of evil people. What do we see on display in our nation today? Hunger on every street. On top of it, terrible economy. On top of it, insecurity of lives and property. Evil everywhere. In Psalm 74 verse 20, God has not left us alone. He said, have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of this world are full of the habitations of cruelty and it's not just limited to nigeria even overseas evil everywhere christians being persecuted pastors being jailed for professing their faith so you don't dare travel into the future with someone that, that has no respect for your god it might be the nicest animal because you have not seen the animalistic part of him. When you press the right button, <laughs> the real nature of him will come out. And God will give you the opportunity to see. If you are calm enough. But many times, ladies and guys are ruled by our emotions. We allow our emotions to cloud our sense of judgment. Sometimes God gives you an opportunity to see. <laughs> He's a beast. The way he behaves. He can, someone, someone just overtakes him while he's driving and then... He's shouting and he's, he's almost fighting. You know that someday this one will beat you up. You know, you know, he's really nice, he's handsome. What does that mean? I don't, I don't think she can hurt a fly. They must be born again. You must set to that question. Somebody comes to you, you must ask them. Ask them for their born again experience. What's your born again testimony? In the days in which we live where you can't tell the difference between a born again christian and someone who's not born again they're doing the same thing and they call it grace <laughs> what's your born again what's your salvation experience who were you before now who are you now has anything changed in your life has anything changed in the days when pastors drink beer and they have scriptures for it so whatever i said before you receive with thanksgiving asking no questions A friend of mine went to visit a, went to visit a pastor in this town, in his office, Monday morning, beer on his, on his table, chilled and sweating. My friend was confused. He didn't know what to say. The pastor said, you are looking at the bed. Forget about that. Let's have our conversation. And they have scriptures for it. That man is no longer in ministry. I doubt it if his marriage is still standing. I strongly doubt it. Very vibrant preacher. So it's not about preaching. Are you born again? Somebody comes to you and wants to bamboozle you with scriptures. Ask him, what encounter have you had with God? When Jacob had an encounter with God, he never walked straight. Away. He couldn't walk straight again. He started limping. He graduated from the Jacob that said in Genesis 28, 16, God was in this place and I never knew. By Genesis 48, he was telling his son, the God of my life's journey. He had reckoned after an encounter with God, that there was a God walking with him all these years. The angel that preserved me all my life. <laughs> if you look at the word angel, there is not angels as in the messengers of God. It's capital A. That's the person of Jesus in the Old Testament. He reckoned that particular man, that particular being, has been with me all my life it will be a shame if you have been raised in the household of faith and you go ahead and date or marry someone that is not born again it will be a shame i'm hard on the sisters many times because they fall victim of this says this is nice nice 
Can I also shock you that heaven is not full of nice people as we speak this morning? Heaven is not even full of good people. Heaven is full of saved people. They may be nice, they may be good, they may be kind, they may be all of that. Those are expected. But are you saved, first of all? Number two point. They must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is key. <laughs> uh, Pastor, but I just want to marry somebody. They must be born again, one. Number two, they must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because every man is getting inspiration from somewhere. Job 32 verse 8. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. You see, if the Holy Spirit is not your source of inspiration, another spirit is your source of inspiration. So when you date someone, you caught someone, you marry someone that is getting inspiration from another source, then you are, you are setting yourself up for trouble. Because someday, they will give you an idea and ask that, okay, let's, let's, as a family, let's do this together. And where is that coming from? God will not sanction anything that does not emanate from him. For with you is the fountain of life. And in your light shall my family see light. In your light shall I see light. Psalm 36 and verse 9. For with you is the fountain of life. There is another fountain which is of death. It's not with God. We know who the administrator of death is. John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life because it's the fountain of life. Jesus is the fountain of life. That's why I am come, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. He is a liar and a murderer, a killer, an assassin from the beginning. When he tells a lie, he tells that which is normal for him to say. It's not just a liar, but the father of it. So there are two sources in the realm of the spirit where people get inspirations from. Some of the music you listen to, where is the inspiration coming from? Ask yourself before you begin to confess the lyrics of the music over your life. Will the Holy Spirit ever tell you, inspire you to say, Wahala day, you see danger? Even if there's a danger ahead of you, the Holy Ghost will give you comfort. Mm. For He is the comforter. John 14 26. John 16, 13, the spirit of truth, the comforter whom the father will send in my name. So people get inspiration from two sources. You marry someone that is getting inspiration from the devil, you are in trouble. Because someday they will tell you, I, you know, I just only, I got this idea that we should begin to do this. Oh, you know, we can do that. We can venture into this, we can venture into that, you know, and we will become very successful. Hey, yeah, you might be successful in the eyes of the world, but will you be successful in the eyes of God? You think everybody that has money is successful in the eyes of God? You don't need God to have money. Work hard, be smart, do your due diligence, you will have money. And you can serve the devil, after all, the devil gives people money as well, he steals from the Christian and gives to his people. So money... You won't find it in heaven. <laughs> the streets of heaven are paved with gold. It ends here for transactions. So God does not see success the way we see it. God sees success in you discovering your purpose, running after it, and fulfilling it. You are successful. You can be successful as a teacher. If God has raised you to train men, and you are training them successfully, to God, you are successful. And it's only a matter of time and faith. Money will come looking for you. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that the Gentiles are dying to get will be additions to you. Never date or marry anyone that is not full of the Holy Spirit. Why do we, what, what is the major challenge that we have in relationships? Canality. I love you, you love me. We are, behind two close, we are behind closed doors. And because we don't know what to do, 
Shebi, I love you, and you love me too. The next thing, start kissing, smooshing, and then touching. And then, well, God will have mercy on us. It's just this once. God is not that, uh, God is not wicked. We are forever loved and forever saved. This doesn't mean that we're going to lose our salvation. And when you get to a point of conviction, you see, it's a job for a Christian to commit sin. It's not easy. A true Christian, it is not always easy to commit sin. Because you have to psych yourself. You have to work on yourself for many days. You have to find a place where you can hide and say, eh, at least mercy of God. Is there. It, it takes processing. The first time. If you don't kill it right there, and you continue, and you continue, it will get to a point. <laughs> when the heart is so exercised in sin, it will become numb to the Spirit of God. It will not be sensitive again to pick instructions from the Holy Spirit. When the heart of man is often and frequently exercised in sin, instead of in righteousness, you will no longer be able to pick. The Bible calls your heart your spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. Can we go there quickly? 1 Corinthians 2 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man that is in him? You don't know anything about your future, but your spirit knows. So, even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So when the spirit of God wants to reveal your future or anything concerning you to you, it will not reveal it to your brain, it will reveal it to your spirit. But that your spirit is exercised in filthiness. It will become numb. So the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something you won't hear. That's why things happen and we are surprised. Sometimes. Things we should know. Because Jesus said, as part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He will show you things to come. Why are we not seeing things to come? Before something happens to a family member, somebody should pick it up in the realm of the spirit. I know this is not a popular teaching anymore, but the truth is, will God do anything and not first of all reveal to his servant the prophet? Amos 7 7. Genesis 18 Shall I do anything and not tell Abraham, my friend? When you become a friend of God, God will, revelations will become cheap. Revelations will become cheap. God will show you things to come. Somebody wants to harm you, we show you beforehand. Give you discernment and give you wisdom what to do. But today, things happen and we are all surprised. Because we are listening to another gospel. Make, that is making us comfortable in sin. Don't marry someone who is not full of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is that man that marries a lady full of the Holy Ghost. Blessed is that woman that marries a man full of the Holy Ghost. A man that can discern. I go on quickly. We don't have time to exhaust this topic. The solution to carnality is spirituality. Romans 8, 6, for to be carnally minded. It, now, 8, 6 to 8. Can we look at that very quickly? I've been teaching that at Bible study, but let's just look at it very quickly. Romans 8, 6 to 8. Quick, quick, quick. It says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Nobody will know life and peace unless they are spiritually minded. You can be living in sin, rising and falling every day. God is forgiving you. He will forgive you. But you won't know life and peace. So go and tell those junky grace, hyper grace preachers. They, they, look at them. They don't know life and peace. You can fall and rise, fall and rise, fall and rise. God will forgive you, but you will not know life and peace because you are so carnally minded. You are programming out to sin tomorrow. A child of God should never have that want to. Papa Kenneth e. again taught us that. You should never have that desire to. You, the plan to sin. I will go to Dubai. He will come from the UK. We'll meet in Dubai and then we'll have sex. I told a friend of mine who was going to Dubai a couple of years ago. His woman friend or girlfriend or whoever I wanted to marry 
was in the UK, he was in Nigeria, he didn't have a UK visa. So they said they would meet in Dubai. I said, young man, you know you are a born again Christian? You are meeting in Dubai. <laughs> now, one, that is dangerous. I would say don't meet with your fiancé. It's good to meet. But, you must be in separate rooms in the hotel. And you must make it known to her before you go. Now, before you leave Nigeria. As we are meeting in Dubai, we are not having sex too. Because the mar marriage is honorable in all, Hebrews 13, 4, and the bed must be kept undefiled. Don't let us give this marriage a wrong foundation. He said, okay, thank you. Way older than me. Then he told the lady. And they said, where did you get that from? He said, from Pastor Fred. My friend. And she has spoken to me a couple of times. She said, why must you tell him? Why must you tell him everything? And he's not the one telling you that we will not have sex in Dubai. Well, me and we have sex, so the relationship is over. So our plan was, I'm a, we'll, finish, we'll finish ourselves when we get to Dubai. We'll finish ourselves. What is it? Wait and do things right. You will have sex, you'll be tired in your marriage. Madame will say, bros, I say, ah, well, ah I, I, want, I want to rest too. Bros will say, babe, what's up now? Ah, only you know I worked all day, I'm tired now. It will happen. Verse 9. Skip no, so, sorry. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You want to marry someone that is in the flesh. You will never please God with your marriage. Every time you want to do the things of God, they want to do the things of the flesh. Can you imagine a couple agreeing together and saying we are fasting three days and we are fasting everything including sex. We are fasting everything. And the man says, no, it's not possible. We have three days for what? No, I mean, I can't stay. I, 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 can't, I can't hold myself. I can't. I can't, I can't. <laughs> one of the gifts of the, one of the fruit, fruit, actually not gift, fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22, the last part of it, one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. It's called temperance in some translations. Self-control. A man that cannot control himself. A woman that cannot control herself. Such a person will ruin your life. Some is food. They can't control appetite. Some, sex. You have to give it to me. Two times a day. So what now happens if you have to go to Canada for a short course? Six months. He will be sleeping with the house help. He will be sleeping with the gardener. Anybody that's sleepable. Anywhere. You have married a he goat. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. And if it's a female, she's a bitch. Cannot hold her. Nah, me, I can't. Two weeks. Yeah, it's too much. You want me to die? Don't let me die. Oh, no, no. Don't kill me. Oh, don't kill me. Carnally minded. We met sex in this world. <laughs> and in this world, we live it. Are you thinking of eternity? Do you ever think about God? Do you ever think that someday you're going to leave this place and move to the next one? Where are you going? When you get home, look at 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. Romans 8, 6 to 8 again. Job 32, verse 8. Proverbs 20, 27. The Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching through all the inward parts of the belly. Let me move on. Number three, which is the last point in terms of qualifications. They must have a vision. Somebody say vision. I can't hear you. Say it out loud. They must have a vision. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. What are you planning to do with your life? Brother, you want to marry me? You want to date me? You want to cut me? Kill of every year, Shay. What's your plan? I just wake up in the morning. I pray in the Holy Ghost. Rabba, 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 rabba. Uh -huh. After that, in God. Is that what we are going to be eating? Young lady, what's your plan? I just want to be a full-time housewife. I don't like stress. You just go and make the money. I will be at home. I'll be taking care of the kids. They are your kids. I'll be taking care of your kids. And I'll be taking care of you. My life's assignment is to take care of you. That's your destiny. Don't date or marry such a lady. And don't date or marry such a man that has no plan. No concrete plan. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my final year, right? So I'm studying economics. So what are you planning to do with that? Well, we don't know. Whatever happens, stuff happens. I might get to travel or I might just get a job. I might, I might, I might. Don't marry an I might man. Marry an I will man. Have you ever read in your Bible, God said, and I might bless you. 
If you do what is right, I might just save you. Haggai chapter 2 verse 19. God said in the last part of it, From this day will I bless you. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. And if you obey the commandment of the Lord, and you do all that is written, and you obey the voice of the Lord, He said, you shall be the head and not the tail. He never said, you might be. That the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations. He didn't say the Lord your God might just feel like setting you on high. He might give his angels charge over you. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. He just might give his angels charge over you. You don't know it's a chance. It's a one chance life. May I never serve a one chance God in my life. When I'm serving God, I want to be sure of the God I'm serving. Will you protect me? He said, yes, I will. Will you bless me? He said, yes, I will. Oh, I love Jacob. He said, as I'm taking this journey, God, if you will bless me and make me great, and I will come back and serve you. And, I will, and he built an altar there. If you will be with me on this journey. Marriage is a journey. A journey into the unknown. You better go with God. And you better go with someone that is born again. You better go with someone that is full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so that when you are done, they can be sharp. Abdor should marry up sharp. Why? What do you even want to? Why do you want to marry an Abdor in your life? Look at the name Abdor. Sorry if your name is Abdor, but become up sharp. <laughs> my sister, one of my younger sisters, very smart. She was the one that came up with that concept. Said, so, no, that guy's not Abdor. It should be up sharp. I said, hey, I never thought of it. Does he have a vision? Does she have a vision? Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. The word of God came to the man and said to him, Now, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. What is your vision? Write it down. Someday soon, actually, I was thinking next this Saturday, but if it doesn't work this Saturday, I'll let you know. We're going to have a meeting. I want to meet with the church, especially all the workers and the leaders, and we will come up with what is called the vision board. Some of you might have had it before, you might not have had it before, but it's something I want a friend of mine to expose us to. So everybody, each person in this church can have your own vision board. Vision board. A life without a vision is a perishable life. A life without a vision has no direction. You just wake up in the morning and you take each day as it comes. No. We all have one chance at life. Life is for the intentional. Life is for the purposeful. Life is for those who have a vision. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read at it. Yes, move on quickly. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. <laughs> Do it, tarry. Wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Can I have an amen? amen? So you want to sit that person down and ask them, what are you planning to do with your life, sir? What are you planning to do with your life, ma? Before we begin to get too intimate and get to a point where we're emotionally tangled, and if I say no, you go and drink hypo. Well, sorry, oh. Before we get too deep, <laughs> what are your plans? I mean, that's why I like people to make friends. Make friends. In the place of friendship, you find out certain things. It's not until you say yes. You, know, you don't meet someone for the first time and say, will you marry me? I don't understand your generation. But where I'm coming from, I want to be friends first so I can observe you from afar. So don't go there. It's a no-go area for me. So somebody will not say, yeah, he came into my life and he now used me. No, I didn't use you. What are your plans? What are you doing now? Where are you now in your plan? And then how do I fit in? My plan is to be one of the best neurosurgeons in the world. Where are you now in that plan? Well, I'm still thinking of maybe taking a degree in biochemistry. When I now finish biochemistry, I will not go to physiology. And when I, because I want to be an all-rounder. Then I will not start medicine. Okay. Biochemistry, four years. Physiology, another four years. Medicine, six years. Before you now get to residency, Eternity. All right. God bless you. Thank you very much. Because obviously, I don't fit into your plan. I was counseling a couple not too long ago. And the lady was saying, you know, Pastor Friend, you know, I really, she's one of my daughters. I want to pursue my PhD. I want to pursue my PhD. My PhD is very important. My, I said, hey, babe, listen to me. 
Now you are married. Did you think of getting before you got married? I said, I administered communion to both of you in my office to seal your union. We have sealed you and you are sealed. Find a way to reconcile with your husband. Where are you going to? <laughs> my PhD, what's, what's PhD? Enter your husband's house properly from his house. Bump picking, bump picking. Then start PhD. You can even start PhD online. Life is a lot easier now. Some of you ladies who are saying, I want to be a career lady. If you want to pursue career, pursue career now. But where is marriage? Because I don't understand the essence of that career. If you don't, if you don't have a proper marriage, if you don't have a sweet marriage, the best you can achieve as one person is a thousand. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30. One will chase a thousand. Two will put 10,000 to flight. Ecclesiastes, I think it's 419 now. It says, maybe 410 or 419. It says, two are better than one. And I always say, two good heads are better than one. Hallelujah. Where do I fit in your vision? If he doesn't have a vision, it might not be a good way to go. Especially because the man is supposed to provide a direction for the home. Not just, well, as we wake up every day, we trust God for what we are going to do. We don't really know because, see, we don't know. Mm -mm. Truly, we don't fully know everything, but there must be a plan. There must be a plan. Where are we going in this family? Where are we going? Five years from now, where do you see yourself? Ten years from now, where are we going to be? Fifteen years from now, where are we going to be? A vision. The vision must be clear. How do I get it right, maritally? Number one, pray. Pray and pray. Three points. Pray, pray, and pray. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. One of those great and mighty things is your marriage. <laughs> marriage is pretty much an unfamiliar terrain for a single person. You've not been there. And may I even tell you, you can't use your parents' marriage to judge your own future. Because no two marriages are exactly alike. So go to him that has your future in the palm of his hands. Talk to him and listen for his voice. For with him is the fountain of life. And only in his light will you see everything. Kedere. In his light will you see light. Psalm 36 and verse 9. In his light will you see light. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Admonishes us to pray. Ephesians 6 18. To pray. <laughs> In the Holy Ghost. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching the soul with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. Pray in the spirit. If you ask me again, I will tell you the most important step to take to get it right is to pray. I have three points, but the most important of them is to pray. And to pray in the spirit. And to pray, listening for the voice of the Spirit. Call upon me. Allow me to answer you. Allow me to show you great and mighty things. When you pray in the Spirit from today, don't just talk to God. Allow God to talk to you. Keraba do siyaba, gusha, makato, brekete, nuriadaba, gerakoto lobo siyaba. Quiet. Be quiet. And if you're like me, I place my hands on my belly. Because of the best of flow, rivers of living water. Because the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And he's searching through all the inward parts of the belly. My spirit. I want to listen from inside. That was how Jesus functioned. John 14, 10. The words that I speak unto you, they are not mine. But the father that dwelleth within me, he doeth the works. The father speaks to him through the Holy Spirit. And then he says it out and then the father does it. Lord, is this the right relationship? It looks like it, but I don't know. But you know. And I know that you know. So show me the light. 
Show me this guy. Show me this lady, Lord. Show me the future. And God can grant you a vision. Clear vision. I was going to take a step in my life many, many years ago. 2004. About to leave the country. For good. 2003, actually. Forever. I was going to leave Nigeria forever. Had my plans. Spoke to my friends. Everybody pressing all the buttons they could press. <laughs> but the way of man is not in himself. And the Lord ponders the, the thoughts of the heart of man. Many are the devices in man's heart. But the plan of the Lord, that alone shall stand. The Lord gave me a clear vision. If you go that route, this is it. I saw myself in a green Cherokee Jeep. Light, light brown leather seat. White shirt. Pristine. Immaculate white. Red tie. Crisp and clean. I was very clean. Pulled over. Coming from work, obviously. Pulled over by the road in my Jeep and I was hitting the steering. Why, 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 Lord, why? Why did I do this? Why did I take this step? Clear. I got up. It was clear. I was in error. So I told my friends, forget about the plan. Psst. Ah, friend, this is a juicy offer. This is... Forget it. <laughs> because when God does not approve of something and you do it, you're on your own. Pray. 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 Pray until you are sure you have the leading of God. Ah, Pastor, I'm sitting down there. Go back and pray. Go back and pray. Go back at Torah. If you need to go on the retreat, go on the retreat and pray. Padekora, Gushaga, Gugarado, And then you listen for his voice. He will speak. One good spouse coming into your life will bring speed and acceleration the bad one the wrong one will take you back to zero make life frustrating and they don't die easy if you know how many men are praying secretly and how many women are praying secretly that their husband their spouse will die so that they can be free from that marriage they call it bondage from the so that they can be free from this bondage marriage is not supposed to be a bondage it's supposed to be a journey that will set us on honeymoon for the rest of our lives. We will disagree, yes. Even with the right person, you will disagree, you will fight. But we, we don't fight to finish. We fight to settle. <laughs> and we embrace again. <laughs> and we enjoy the journey again. And then we hit, boom, ah, close Shiana, close your, ah, okay, 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 okay. Number two, know yourself. Know yourself. Know yourself. John 1, 19 to 23, they sent the Pharisees and the priests to John in Jerusalem, or from Jerusalem, to ask him in the wilderness, who are you? One question. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, only one question, who are you? That must be an important question. All the way from Jerusalem to go to the wilderness to go and meet John where he was baptized, who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed. I love that scripture. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed. I am not the Christ. Uh -huh. Move on quick. And they asked him, what then? Are thou Elijah? He said, no. Are you that prophet? He answered, no. So then said unto him, they were becoming frustrated. Who are thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? What do you say of yourself? Who are you? Let me ask you, church, who are you? I want to marry a, a prince. He has to be Prince Charming. Tall, dark, and handsome, has money, has a nice car, lives on a nice estate. I don't want face me and face you. I don't want this. I don't want no scrub. Scrub is any guy that. that can get no love from me sitting at the passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at me come on now i don't want no scrub well you don't know that anymore that wasn't our days you don't want no scrub who are you 
You know, back in the day, I used to laugh a lot when I listened to those radio programs, you know, where they are trying to match, match make people, and somebody will call and say, I'm, I'm 23, hello, hello, radio DJ, I'm 23, I want a guy, a guy that is so, so, and so, is this, is nice, is God-fearing, is loving, is caring. He doesn't have to have so much money, but he doesn't need it for us to be comfortable. As a matter of fact, so, so, and so. <laughs> I always wonder. I wish back in the day, radio could be like television so that I can also see your face. You that you want a tall, dark, handsome guy. Are you also tall? Tall, dark, and beautiful? Or tall, fair, and beautiful? Or short, fair, and beautiful? This is what I, you know, it's very easy to, to draw a shopping list. This is what I want. I want him to be perfect. He has to be this. He has to be built. He has to be well built. And, he, and his account must be built. What about your own account? You want to be a liability? Listen to me. If you are going to be a Queen Esther, you must have the virtue of the slave girl Esther. She wasn't a queen from the beginning. She was brought up by her uncle Mordecai. But you know that this young lady listened to her uncle to the point that when she was in the palace, she risked her life. She said, I have one request. Pray for me. Fast for me. I myself and my, my maids will also fast and pray. And I will go into the king without his invitation. And if I perish, I perish. But you are not like that. But you want the best man in the world. Or you are a guy. You are not grooming yourself. No self-development. You are not building up on your skills. You don't have people skills. Some of you lack people, people skills. You lack it. You don't know how to talk. You talk anyhow, and you want the best of the girls in the expression house. It won't work. You're smelling. Your mouth is smelling. Your shoes are smelling. Your socks are smelling. Your boxer shirt is smelling. Everything is smelling. And you want, oh, you know, I want the best. If you want the best, improve on yourself. In fact, improve on your, vo your, your, your vocabulary. Improve on your verbal advantage. Some guys are talking, and I'm looking at them. Are you talking at all? Because in these days, when people use drugs a lot, some of you who don't use drugs, you are not on tramadol, you are not on those drugs, you are, you are mimicking, you are talking like your friends who use drugs. I talk to a lot of young guys and I'm hearing, yeah, you know, like, it's like, man, ah, man, this is Nigeria, eh? it's like, ah, oh, uncle, ah, oh, pastor, ah, oh, man, it's like, it's like, man, one guy took me, Uber guy. So I was trying to engage him, interact with him. I said, ah, you know, Jesus loves you. Ah, I said, man. Ah, Rose. Ah, Jesus, man. As in, if person no love Jesus, who person gonna love now? That was the way he spoke from the beginning of the trip to the end. I said, we have arrived at, oh, I know, bro. Make I just try. Make I turn, like, as in, like, and I see that a lot on social media. And I trace it to the Malians and some of these people that are always high on drugs. And you are a born again Christian. I, 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 I like, you know, God is good. If I had a daughter, I would never give you. If you are going to have mentors, have cerebral mentors. Have you listened to the speech of Obama? Go on YouTube and listen and Google and dig up the, the, the speeches of people like Martin Luther King Jr. I'm not saying that everybody has to have an oratory skill, but I'm saying you can improve. Improve. Sometimes I don't have patience. Slot speech. Kilo day, kilo share. I'm a fabric, me. What? You're not saying this is that. This is not saying yes. How would they say yes? Some men will be talking. You see saliva by the corner of their mouth. Like, oh my God. That irritates me. Somebody was talking to me in my office, and saliva was all over my mouth. So I pulled back my chair. Social distancing. Not because I was like, afraid of COVID. I'm, I'm never afraid of it, but I don't like saliva. Sal ah! And it was moving closer to me, releasing missiles. See, we need to get to a point where we tell ourselves the truth. Sometimes I ask my wife, I say, Oh, yeah. Smell my breath for me. Show her okay. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Sometimes you'll be the one to tell me, mm, uh, uh, try Latin, I understand the language. Know yourself. 
Know yourself. If you are fighting halitosis, fight it well. Get a dentist. Get help. Do, go and do scaling and polishing. I do it. Scaling and polishing does not reduce your spirituality. You are talking, we can see all the yellow, yellow, yeah, uh, who likes that? The ladies already thinking, hey, in my future, so we will not marry. They will not say, you may now kiss the bride. She will not say, you may now kiss the bride. Butter. Number three, so that it's not be as if I didn't finish this message at the dawn service. I will expatiate more. I have scriptures for you. Okay. In knowing yourself, I believe that the Holy Spirit will help you to discern. When you know yourself, then you can know who fits into your life, who can help, who can come in as a helpmate. Abraham discerned Melchizedek, Genesis 14, 18 to 19, or maybe even to 20 something. The sons of Issachar, First Chronicles 12, 32, were men that were able to discern the times and seasons. I will expatiate on that in, in, the, in the next service. Number three, and I want to wrap it up here, be friendly, be friendly. You want to get it right? A man that wants to have friends must show himself friendly. Don't be a troglodyte. Don't be a solitudinarian. Don't be a recluse. That's why some ladies are not available. They are not, they are not engaged because they are not available. They are not available. Because that will be kundi or dibi shukudi. In your father's house 24-7. When you come to jail, after may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ it meets you at the parking lot. No time to interact. And some parents too. When you, you, your, your daughter is twenty-two, hey, well, well, at that time, oh, we are meeting at the parking lot. We are going home now. Now your pastor is speaking, preaching for too long. It's all right. By the time you are twenty-eight and there's nobody, they'll be those. Oh yeah, go, go to our friends. Oh yeah, go, 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 go out, go and meet friends. Why must it get to that? Make friends. Help me tell your number. Say, please make friends. Tell them, tell them, it's not as hard as that. You lay. Have somebody you smile with. Ah. Make friends. Even God makes friends. God said, Abraham, my friend. David, my friend. Jesus said, Lazarus, our friend, is sleeping. Let's go and wake him up. God has friends. Jesus has friends. Holy Spirit has friends. Who are you? Who do you resemble? Who do you resemble when you don't have friends? Oh, Lord. Eh? My grandmother used to complain back in the day. She would come from her hometown and stay with us for a short while. Say, ah, Akiola. Oh, look, Wepo. Oh, look, Wepo. Oh, look, who is friend. You have so many friends. I say, yes. Because there's no boredom around me. And they know when they come to my house, they will eat my mommy's amala for free. So they will come. My room was always busy. Have friends. Have friends. I'll give you more scriptures on this much later. And please don't be cantankerous. Men can be cantankerous. Women can be cantankerous. Don't be someone that is easy to fight. Very easy, quickly. Just any little thing. Fuse, that's a bone. Boah! Some people's fuse. It bones. Boah! With a loud sound. Loud bang. Just because somebody says, ah, you are, you've gained weight. Too. What do you mean I've gained weight? I'm sorry. Ah, why are you sorry? You're sorry for yourself. Sister, are we fighting before? Not only ladies, though, some men too. One of my friends, he got angry, carried his own television, and banged it on the floor. Boah! I said, okay. <laughs> television has spoiled now. <laughs> You'll never see me in your house again because we used to come there to watch television. One day we were coming from administration. He took the bag because he was angry with his fiance. The bag that we kept, where we kept our costumes, at Mokalan and about, he took the bag and banged it on the floor. Boah, the bag tore into pieces. Trrr. It was a fr another friend of mine that borrowed the bag from his mother. He said, ah, ah, no, my mama get the bag. My mama bag don't tear. My mama bag don't tear. We began to tell him, can you ever sustain a relationship like this? Will you ever get married? He began to calm down. He, he said he himself called himself to a meeting at Jotonero. You know when you invite yourself to a meeting, I say, sit down and begin to talk to yourself. Happily married today is like is one of the teddy bears I know around. He's like a teddy bear. Not only did that affect his relationship, anger, anger began to affect his blood pressure. 
when you get angry, shout, shout, shout. Blood pressure is increasing. So calm down. Every time they say, calm down. Nobody wants to roll with an angry person. Proverbs 21, 19. It's better for a man to dwell in the wilderness than in the same house, in a large house with a, with a cantankerous woman. Proverbs 25, and I think 24 now, 25, 24. It says it's better to dwell in the rooftop than to dwell in the same house with a fighting woman. The same with a fighting man. Nobody wants to dwell with, a, with an angry man. No? Sometimes when I'm angry like this, and all over the house, my wife just gone. In the beginning of the marriage, she was arguing with me. Argue, 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 argue. Now she doesn't argue again. <laughs> She'll just go to one corner. <laughs> and don't be minding her business. And she'll not be pinning me. <laughs> you know when you're angry and you want somebody to be angry, you need somebody to be angry with you so that you can, uh, you can spark. But there's nobody to be angry with. And I can't go to the children and be angry with them. <laughs> so I will now, I will now use time. I'm not calm down. I said, uh -huh. but, oh, but you hurt me. She said, I didn't do anything. And I knew she didn't do anything. Though. But you hurt me. Uh, be no Kill the baby. Let's all get better. We all need to improve. Nobody wants to dwell with, a, with, with an angry fellow. Life can be sweet. Life can be enjoyable. And I pray that we all get it right in Jesus' name. Um... Finally, don't go into relationships with the wrong reasons. Don't go for the intention to change someone because you can't change anybody. Don't go with the intention of, uh, you know, you're pitying them because they just broke up. Don't go with the intention of making money or material acquisition. Those are wrong reasons. We'll continue from then the month of March by the grace of God. Can I have an amen? amen? The truth is nobody can get it right except Jesus. Except you are in Christ. If you are outside of him, you won't get it right. You might get all the statistics and all the parameters right, but the person, <laughs> every human being is a spirit. Stand on your feet, everybody. You don't know that spirit unless Jesus shows you that spirit. And he won't show you unless you are in him. So I want to give somebody an opportunity this morning. Somebody that wants to get it right. You want to say, Pastor, please pray with me. I myself need Jesus. I need him. I need him in my life.